Typically, I record a lot of videos around SQL Server performance optimization, query tuning, index tuning, etc. Today, the mood was different, so I thought, why not come up with something different? And I came up with SQL Server Management Studio tips and tricks. Now, this idea also came up uh, when I was interacting with a customer and we were chatting a few DBAs and myself and some of these tips popped up as to how it helps them. So I made a list of few of them. There are so many tips related to SQL Server Management Studio. I won't call them as tips, but I will call them as options and features and functionalities that can help you increase your productivity when you're working with this tool. I can't remember a day in my life when I probably would not have switched on SQL Server Management Studio. So you're like kind of so attached to, the, to this tool. So I made a random list. Uh, it's up to you to decide whether these features or these tips are helpful to you or not. But anyways, let's go and have a look at them. The first one is the color coding of the environment, not necessarily the overall environment, but just the status bar out there. It kind of gives you a visual indicator as to which environment you're connected to, specifically when you connect to prod environments. So like this query window has a connection. So right click and go to connection, change connection, or, or when you, whenever you have this dialog box, even when you're making a new connection, Click on options and there is an option here called use custom color. So let's select custom color and let's say you are, you're connecting to the prod environment and you want to take something like bright red, which gives you this uh, visual indicator as to be careful. So now you can look at the status bar, it's all red. So that visual indicator, be careful. And let's say if you're connecting to test or dev, for example, and you have color coding like green or yellow or something like that. So you can, you know, okay, you can be casual, even go and drop a table if you want. Okay, so that's about color coding. The next one is super powerful. And I think this one needs no introduction, which is line number. So let's go to another query window here. Now, if you see there, there are some uh, select statements out here, et cetera, no line numbers bad idea so what we can do is go to tools options and here is the tree structure there so under text editor you have all languages and under all languages there is something called as general and you have this option here line numbers i'm sure this is turned on for most of you so let's turn this on click on okay and you get the line numbers this is also very helpful when you have these line numbers uh, popping up uh, in error messages that such and such line number has an issue. So you can always do control G and go to a specific line number. Let's go to line number 19. You see line number 19 has an execute statement for a stored proc. So let's click on okay. And the cursor goes and places itself at line number 19. Very helpful out there. Okay, so that was line number tip. The next one is switching query windows. Again, I'm assuming you would know this. You have too many query windows opened in SSMS and you want to switch between them the way we switch uh, in windows using alt tab, but here your trick will be control tab. So when you press control tab, you will come across a small dialog box there, which will give you all the active files and windows that are currently open. And you can um, of course switch to anyone that you wish, okay? Let's go back and look at the next one. Casing. Mm, I haven't been using this much, but be simply because it gives you this option of either convert everything to uppercase or everything to lowercase. And typically, you know, we are dealing more like, like this, for example, Pascal casing or camel casing. So that option is not there. So let's say you have this and you want to convert this entire statement the text into uppercase so you can press control shift u so it goes to uppercase and if you want to go back to the lowercase control shift l and this takes you to the lowercase but nothing in between anyway so if you think this is good try using it templates i used to use templates quite a bit early on uh, specifically when you're dealing with a lot of ddl statements like create drop etc if you're not doing that too often, you won't remember all the syntax. See, template explorer is open here on the right side. Let me close it. And first I will show you where can you open this from. So you go to view 
on the menu bar and click on template explorer and the template explorer opens up and look at all this all these objects here it's good there is a tree structure based on the objects like for example how many times have you really uh, wrote t sql related to audit or certificate or change data capture tracking so many of them and you wouldn't remember the syntax for all of them so this is where it is helpful let me take syntax that I'm very use, uh, used to, which is index, for example. So let's open a new query window here. And I want to create an index as simple as that. So let's expand this and you get a few templates out here, templates for creating an index, etc. So let's take create index, one of the templates here, the basic one, and just drag it to the query window. And what you get is a template. And now what you have to do is just fill in the blanks. And not in this cumbersome way, there is an easier way to fill in the blanks. When you have the template in the query window, go to query, specify value for template parameters. And you get a dialog box where you have all the parameters. And these are the dummy values that the template gave you. Just change them to whatever you want. So let's say value AdventureWorks, I'll call it AdventureWorks 2016. Name of the index, let's call it as IND SQL Maestros. Schema, uh, schema name, let's call it as DBO and table name, let's call it as Amit and the column name, let's call it as Bansil. The mood is different today. Look at the t-shirt. Okay. Click on OK. And there you go. AdventureWorks 2016 and you, everything that you placed, the values, they all show up now in the code and you can just go and execute there. Okay. This won't work because there's no column name Bansil. There's no table name called Amit, but you get what I'm trying to say. Okay. So we are done with templates, block edit, great feature, but um, uh, you know, you come across doing it, but when, when you come across a scenario where you can actually use it, the point is, do you remember that you can do something like this? Okay. So what I mean by this is let's jump over to the query here. Okay. So you, you look at this and you know, I did, I replaced 888 there. I'll do the other part now. So I was trying this. You want to change three, four, three, four, all these values to a single value. And you only want to select this, like the vertical block selection. So what you can do is place the cursor over, over here, just before three, press shift and alt, and then just select, just select. This is vertical block selection and you want to replace it to a value. Let's change it to six, for example, six, very useful. But you know, sometimes I do come across something like this, but I don't remember that there is a feature like that. Now that I even know, but it's like applying it at that point in time. So that presence of mind is lacking there. But anyway, very good feature there. So this is the block edit feature. What else we have? Splitting query window. This is super useful, specifically when you're dealing with a huge SQL code or stored procedure, etc. with hundreds of lines of code. And this is essentially a Microsoft uh, Office feature, which is, and it's there in SSMS. So I mean, wherever it comes from, good to use it. So let's say this is a query window and you want to split it into two. So you have this small icon there, as you can see. And what I will do is just click and drag. So the same query window now splits into two and is very helpful when you really want to just compare the code, something from top to bottom and things like that. So I can, I have the same window now in split into two parts. So the, um, I can just scroll in either one of them and compare, very useful. How to get rid of this? Simply just take the splitter and just push it up and it goes back to just one view. What else we have? Generate scripts. This is good. now. I'm sure you know about generating the schema scripts, but I just want to quickly show you generating the data. Now look at this data here. Uh, where did this come from? So I'll, I'll show this to you. So we say select star from, there is a table here, weight snapshots one. If I execute this, okay, I get an error, wonderful, because we changed the name of the database there. So now I have this table and what I want to do this, uh, what I want to do is create a script which will give me the schema for the table, which is the create table statement along with all the columns, et cetera. And I also want a script for the data. Now look at this, there are 1070 rows there. Okay, and I want a complete script which is creating the table and then inserting this data. 
Now creating the script is quite straightforward, like you can right click and just generate create statement. But what I want to show you is this, right click the baseline database or any database where the object is, go to tasks and then there is an option here, generate scripts, click on that, move to next, the wizard, choose the specific table that you want. So we want snapshot one, this is what I have taken, move next. And the trick here is in the advanced section. I don't know why are these called as advanced, but anyway, click on the advanced button there, scroll down, there are a lot of options that you may want to explore. But one of them here is, what do you really want to generate, okay? Types of data to script. So you want data only, schema and data and schema only. So by default, it is schema only. And that's why we all know that you can generate the schema script, but I want schema and data. So let's go and select schema and data, click on okay. And then what else? Where do you want to save all of this? Okay, this is just a quick demo. So let's copy this in a new query window. Next, you get the summary of the options that you have chosen. Next, and then done, finish. The script was generated even before finish. So anyway, so you get the, uh, the create table statement and this is wonderful you get the insert statement for all the 1070 records. Are we done? Yes, I showed you eight tips and tricks, not really too many tricks out there, but yes, features, tips on being more productive with SSMS. So um, let's see if I explore more, and there's so many out there actually, so many features and options that we could show, we could discuss, and I'm sure all of you know so many already. But yeah, I wanted to do something here and show you a few things that uh, I use quite often. This one more, which is which I did not show here, but maybe next time, but just to call this out, you have this results pane coming at the bottom, so you can always hide or show it or unhide it using Control R. But when you run the statement, right, you get the results here. I want the results to come in a new tab. That is also very useful. And that's again there in tools option. So when you execute the query, the result pane will open in a new tab. Very helpful. It's not there in the list, but I called it out. Explore it in tools options. Hope the video was useful. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.